ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a gentleman down the far end of the, uh, the table. I, I, I use the word gentleman advisedly. He's New Zealand epitome of uh, sex and drugs and rock and roll. A man who, um, who has probably seen more fake orgasms than any other man in the room. <laughs> Including his own, yes. Calls out his own name. No, probably one of the greatest keyboardists in the country. Uh, in fact, he said to me tonight, he said, Guy, tonight, I'm going to do my Spanish bit. But she hasn't turned up, so he's going to roast Tom instead. Ladies and gentlemen, Richie Clingerhead! In or out? <laughs> Thank you. Most sincerely, excuse me if I drink and smoke, but I'm not going to fucking change for you. Uh, yeah, I met Tom Sharplin uh, when he was still a ballad singer. Uh, he was doing a song called Love is a Beautiful Song. That was his big hit. <laughs> and he still couldn't remember the words because they're halfway through. He'd go, la, 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 la. <laughs> Fuck all's changed. Um, but before I go any further, there are a few people that picked on me. <laughs> you didn't uh, but I'd like to say what a privilege it is to be uh, on, invited onto this stage with so many great entertainers and Tom <laughs> and uh, I'll start by uh, replying to little Stevie Larkins here down here who uh, was unmerciful in his uh, taking the Michael out of me and of course his wonderful partner only in work because she doesn't do gay boy <laughs> a sushi lunch <laughs> well known popular nibble around town a lot of people say that she only married her last husband named Lynch because she thought that meant he was hung <laughs> not true there was a now this is a true story sushi came down to cambridge where i live and reigned supreme um, and uh, we were in the wine shop as you do before you write songs and this is true isn't it sushi and uh she was uh, walking around and uh, she had just moved into a new apartment she didn't have much furniture and she called out across the wine shop in Cambridge oh Richie I can't wait to get into your bed tonight <laughs> meaning my spare bed but meaning I was going spare to spare bed exactly, exactly. Real bed. everyone I was saying can't you get the bitch is fucking me <laughs> bring it on not true not true <laughs> I used to uh, wake up uh from being bottle fed <laughs> and um, watch happen and come on and shows like that because I'm that young and uh, there used to be a drum roll and then all of a sudden someone would come out with processed hair and, <laughs> and <laughs> suppressed sexual things and, and what then, else did Peter say and then Pete would introduce <laughs> this, the chicks <laughs> And of course, we'd all sit in the corner of the room, beating furiously <laughs> on our drum kits, uh, and uh, none smaller than Steve's. <laughs> but, uh, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. like a puppet on a street. Oh, yes. <laughs> you have no idea, bitch. <laughs> And then, of course, there's Gay Caterer. <laughs> In the corner, how does he keep those hot dogs warm? Uh, let alone put the holes in the donuts. Jim Joel, who did give Tom Sharplin his first crack. Uh, which, passed on, which he passed on to his younger brother, Gordon. And... Uh, I have so many stories about Sean. We 
we've got so many names from Tom Sharplin was the one you know him by Sean Tarpolin <laughs> Torn Sharkfin Hey You and Fuckface <laughs> mind you the last two mostly used by Trudy <laughs> And uh, I was first introduced to Tom, and uh, do you mind uh, putting your hand out for a minute? No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, I first met Tom, failed ballad singer in Carthia, New Year's Eve, 1973. We'd just signed to Dave McKee, who Angela is, who we also used to be quite rhythmic over. <laughs> Still the big bitch. <laughs> What a babe! I remember going to see her in the chorus line. Correct? <laughs> yeah. Uh, lots of timing. Something Tom's forgotten. But I, I was down in Carthia New Year's Eve and they said, oh look, we've got this failed ballad singer. We were all 17 years old and he was really old. He was about 23. <laughs> And they said, oh, look, they bring down this fucking cripple. <laughs> and um, and uh, we were introduced to Tom Sharplin. And he was, because he was closer to the management than us, he said, oh, look, I've organised the accommodation and everything. And in Kafia, there were two rooms at the hotel. He had one and all his bitches had the other. <laughs> I slept on stage with hay bales. <laughs> At least I got laid. <laughs> Speaking of which, that brings me to his delightful wife, Trudy, who I wasn't going to pick on tonight, but no, no, I won't. I'll go to some of his other girlfriends first before he met Trudy. <laughs> who, who, I might add, I was completely responsible for him meeting and marrying, and you can spell meeting how you want. Um, Tom and and myself and Glenn White and Bill Osborne and Steve Bill Wilson yeah we formed a band called Tom Sharpen and Graffiti and we toured and we did six nights a week all over New Zealand for two years and we were just touring every night we were playing uh, Sundays we oh sorry no cameras <laughs> Sundays Sundays we would be moving, you know, to the next pub. Uh, we were in we were in Hastings at the Pacific Hotel in Hastings. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> take this shit, cripple. <laughs> and we were in the Pacific Hotel in Hastings, and Tom had picked up this girl. And then, so she well, she tripped over. She certainly did. She was a completely fucking fool. <laughs> and uh, we were all down, you know, those like those of you who have ever been into those old hotels. You know, you got the little single room, a cupboard, and a toilet. Oh, no, hang on, they're called hand basins for men. <laughs> and uh, there was heaps of them up and down each corridor. And so what we did was we put a microphone under Tom's bed. Oh. Mm, yes, we did. And we ran it through across under the carpet with little wires and that into the next room with the rest of us who were too ugly to get laid. <laughs> waited with a tape recorder. And we caught every word and I still have the tape. I was searching for it today, but it was all covered in sticky stuff. <laughs> Um, but we had this tape and and we were waiting, you know, sort of like for Tom to do the uh, <laughs> romantic stuff and uh, it was sort of like mm. and she was mm. Mm. and then it, after a, a convenient amount of foreplay, which was about oh, 30, 46 seconds <laughs> You heard. Oh, Tom. Oh, Sue. Oh, Tom. Oh, Sue. This is true, too. This is true, and I do have the tape. And it carried on for about another 30 seconds. Oh, Tom. Oh, Sue. Oh, Tom. Oh, Sue. Oh, Tom. Oh, Tom. on 
one about Tom's sexual exploits. Uh, I was responsible for Tom getting married. You got pregnant? <laughs> when Tom met Trudy, it was in Christchurch in 1975. No, it was originally in, in Gisborne, but you were there. It was the second time. Oh, the second time. This is the bullshit. I was in Christchurch. Something I met like this babe, and she was awesome. She was yummy. And she said, oh, Richie, I'd like that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, fine by me. And she said, but I've got this girlfriend. You know, can you jack her up with someone? So I went to Tom and said, oh, mate, you've got to help me out. I'm, I'm on a roll. <laughs> Nearly. But she was a big girl. <laughs> and, uh, and this girl, Sandy, turned up and she had a girlfriend and her girlfriend was Trudy. I said, oh, Tom, can you help me with the old bag? <laughs> Tom said, yo, don't worry, bro. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> not myself. But anyway, so uh, Tom looked after Trudy while I looked after Sandy and we were sharing a room. And um, to cut a short story long, <laughs> on my part um, we, we were in a room where the beds were head to head right in a motel so I was there with Sandy and Tom was there with Trudy and of course we weren't doing anything <laughs> it didn't take 30 seconds <laughs> and uh, I remember looking over and thinking Oh, I wonder if they're doing it. Because <laughs> I have. <laughs> wonder if she's awake. <laughs> and uh, I looked over and sure enough, Tom and Trudy were shagging. And I looked over and I thought, what a nice ass and gorgeous tits. <laughs> then I realised it was Tom on top. <laughs> Through the years, Tom and I have shared many, and I'm sorry if anyone's offended by the way I'm speaking. <laughs> not. Because it's all true. Uh, I'm not like these other people who come up here with prepared speeches and that. And <laughs> <laughs> Lovely kiss kill. Um, but I'd just like to say what a privilege, is, privilege it is being knowing Tom and uh, watching his talent disappear. <laughs> and he is the best entertainer I've ever seen work a live crowd. No shit. My nose grown. I can't afford that shit. He's been a really close friend and he's helped me through a lot of moments of triumph and tragedy. Uh, and I've seen him through a few moments of his own personal tragedy, which you can buy for $20. Uh, and I'd just like to say what a thrill and a privilege it is to be. Uh, asked to come here tonight not that I have been but, uh, <laughs> I'd also like to say apart from extremely lusting after Susie Lynch uh, with the little white boots do you remember that stuff and the sequins and the and, and, uh, <laughs> and the cardigan yeah that works for us Waikato fellas <laughs> Yeah, because if you're for effort Frisian, you pull on a jersey. <laughs> and the only other female I've ever lusted after... Oh, there's two of them. <laughs> I've never lusted after Jodie Vaughan. She's always been a bloke to me. <laughs> I think that's ever been... That's always been since I saw her standing up the urinal and tickle what he calls it. 
But I did chase Angela Rears around for a while and she doesn't even remember. <laughs> well, I didn't have my dick out. Uh, right, moving right along now. Uh, anyway, thank you very much. And a gentleman and a scholar. And I give my heart, my soul and my hand. Ladies and gentlemen, Richie Pickett.